punctuation. Uh, but even in English, when we put punctuation in, this is the first sentence of our reading from Galatians, the very first sentence in the book of uh, the letters of the Galatians. Paul, an apostle, sent neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead, and all the members of God's family who are with me, to the churches of Galatia, peace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear Galatians, this is Paul. Why didn't he just write that? I mean, that is one sentence. It's five <coughs> verses. Five verses in one sentence. And Paul is doing an awful lot here. He's doing so much. And he's trying to establish something very important. That isn't going to be your traditional salutation. No greetings. No dear Galatians. I actually looked up this week, I was trying to find the origin of writing in the letter Dear, whoever, you know, Dear Sue, comma, Dear Mr. Uh, Smith, colon. And there wasn't a lot out there that really said, other than it was kind of a medieval uh, Middle English coming from the, the Latin for caritas and charity, but it, it is a word that came to be just shorthand to say, here, here's, I'm addressing you, a polite way to do it. And for many of us now, kind of quaint, because we don't use it very often. I know that uh, when I'm writing a letter, uh, a, a, an email, if I said, Dear Sue, the person would go, Oh, this is very formal. Most of us say, Hi, or Hello, or just the name, or even just start into it, which that's it. I, just no salutation whatsoever. But Paul, he doesn't just say, dear Galatians. He doesn't do it by formula. Paul has a formula that he greets the churches and he has a, a process by which he goes and, and he, 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 he compliments them and gives them love and peace and greetings. But Paul has got himself worked up ahead of steam about the Galatians. And he is not just trying to establish, you know, this set rote salutation to say, okay, here, here's who I'm writing to and here's who is writing it. And he is setting right from the beginning his authority and where it comes from. He is saying, Paul, an apostle. Notice he does that first, an apostle. Paul is the only of the apostles that didn't actually meet Jesus during Jesus' earthly life. Paul was the one who saw Jesus as he was uh, struck blind and, and falls off his horse on the road to Damascus. He is an apostle. That's really important for his credentials here. He's almost kind of like putting the letters after your name when you have a certain degree. He is wanting you to know right away that he is someone authoritative when it comes to talking about Jesus. So he says, Paul, an apostle. And then he says, neither by human commission nor from human authorities, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father. There is nobody on earth, nobody, who's telling him what to do. Jesus himself gave him the marching orders. Uh, God the Father who raised him from the dead. And then he says, and all the members of God's family who were with me. It's his community, the people who were with him, to the churches in Galatia. When he is writing this to the Galatians, he is trying to establish his authority, not just because he likes to throw it around, but because he has a very particular message to give them. Over the next six weeks or so, we'll be hearing from the letter to the Galatians. And, and it really has a purpose. Most of Paul's letters have a specific purpose to them. 
You know, Corinthians, especially 1 Corinthians, is get your act together. And the Philippians is do it. You're doing great. Keep it up. I love you. To the Galatians, he wants to say, wait a minute. Let's get back on message. Because what has happened is Paul has come and converted the Gentiles that are in that community. And they have become followers of Jesus. And he preached a gospel whereby they were completely and utterly saved by Jesus through God the Father who raised him from the dead. And then Paul said his goodbyes and he left. And other people came. And not necessarily through ill intention, but through good intention, they said, wait, you're not circumcised. They said, you know, Jesus was Jewish, and we're Jewish. You should be Jewish to follow Jesus. And they went, oh, oh, okay, you know. Most of us like to be told what's exactly required of us, and so they were given some requirements, and they're following it. Paul has gotten wind of this, and he is not pleased, because he's working very hard to show that God saves everyone. Jewish or not, that Jesus is for the whole world. So we have kind of a bee in his bonnet about this. He wants to establish his authority right off the bat. No dear Sue for him. No dear Galatia. In this passage, we begin to see Paul's anger. And that is the undoing of the teaching he's given them. Because after he does his whole salutation that says, here's where I am, he doesn't say, it's his amen, that's basically the calm of the salutation. What does he say? He doesn't give them any kind words or anything. He says, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is another gospel, he says. It's returning to one. He says, if somebody tells you something that contradicts what I taught you when I was there, right there with you, if somebody teaches you something that's contrary to that, they are cursed. And I'm not just talking about other disciples who may come and talk about it. If an angel comes and says something different, if I write you and say something different, you know it's not from God. And he says, I'm not doing this to please people. He said, I didn't come there just because, you know, I enjoy getting accolades. He said, I do it because this is what God has given me to do. I don't do it for any human being. I don't do it for any other reason than the fact that Jesus told me to do this. So he spends the whole letter, and he really has one message. He says, there is one commandment. Remember, Jesus had two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind and soul and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Paul simplifies it even more. He said, love your neighbor as yourself. That's it. That's the message that he wants to give. Now, it seems like he's leaving something out. You know, that worshiping God and loving God is, is something that is, uh, is really important. But what he's saying is if you're doing that, if you're loving your neighbor as yourself, you are going to be showing God love because you're loving yourself because Jesus first loved you. It's very, very long. But he's really looking to get a message across. Now, some of you will remember many years ago, one of my mentors, uh, uh, Father Pratt, was the priest here for 20 years, George Lyon Pratt. And Father Pratt had something that he did that you knew exactly what was going on in just a couple of words. He would come and he put his arm around you. Dear friend, or friend. And you knew that meant that he was going to ask you to do something and that you were going to do it. 
He did it to me. Uh, he was uh, interim rector of my home church, and he came to me and he said, Dear friend, not dear Leslie, not Leslie, dear friend. I knew he meant business. In his case, he asked me to be director of the accolades. I was very delighted to do what he asked me to do that time. There were other times when perhaps I was a little more resistant, but Paul is, in essence, doing this with the Galatians. He's not using language as just a way to be wordy. He wants to communicate something right off the bat and to get their attention. And for us, for ever and ever and ever, writing in English, the way you got somebody's attention was dear blank. Paul. Paul is not going to let you mistake at all what he's about. This week, I thought about starting all my emails very Pauline and kind of giving the message instead of just writing hi or hello or dear. And I have to say, I, I didn't do it. I couldn't figure out why. I thought this would be great. I'll send a, a message to one of my best friends who's also a priest and preparing to preach and say, you know, if I were Paul, I would say it. But I couldn't do it. And I realized it's because I was writing emails about minor things. Paul is not communicating minor things here. This is not a camp letter. Dear mom and dad, camp is fun. Send money. Your son. Paul is communicating the gospel to them. Now Paul didn't know because he believed that Jesus was going to come any minute. He didn't know that nearly 2,000 years later, we'd be sitting here reading his letter and finding that it speaks just as much to us today as it did then. Perhaps it gets lost a little bit in the translation, but what he says to the Galatians is that God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age. Strong words. But we do live in a broken world. We do live by a set of laws that are not necessarily written, but are nonetheless enforced. I remember, uh, you know, not so long ago, that a woman would not have dared enter church with a pair of pants on. A gentleman would have had a hat and taken off that hat when he entered the church. I mean, there are so many little unspoken things. This is my seat. I sit here. You know, I, I think we have all kinds of ways that we think we have to do things a certain way in order for God to love us. Not so different from the Galatians being told, oh, you know, yes, it's all freely given, but, you know, cover your bases by keeping kosher and being exercised. <coughs> Paul's letter is a very long one to say one essential thing, really, and that is to love your neighbor as yourself. All the rest of it
the neighbor to every single other person. Everyone. Everyone. Paul is writing to a specific people, but the message is timeless. Love your neighbor as yourself. 